everyone, I'm the Mac Humanator. I'm Buster. And this week in Toku, we're going to be discussing some rediscovered boomer media, Gokaiger getting yet more content, and, uh, hey, how about that? Revice's final arc is finally getting off its ass. Yeah! Um, but before I... all that, Buster, how you doing? I am okay. I kind of didn't really do much today, but I'm planning, I already planned this week. I'm gonna do it. Uh, gonna, gonna do, like, the things for the videos and my job, and... Oh, yeah, did I mention I got a new job on this podcast? I don't think you have. Yeah, I got a new job. I, I talked about... I probably talk about on components or something. So I think cares. you did a little bit, but, like, you're you're editing for somebody now, right? Yeah, and that, that pays really well, um, and I'm probably... I probably got to start saving money, because I've been spending way too much. And also, yeah. apparently, shipping for a toy I will be getting next week is very expensive, so... Mm. Hmm. I might want to know. I might want to know details about that compared to uh, my shipping for that toy. But we'll we'll discuss that off mic. Um, yeah. Uh, <sighs> how are you doing, Mister VAC? I am doing so great. Is this a lie? This is a lie. Okay. Yeah. Figured. It's a terrible lie that nobody will ever believe. But I'm saying it anyway. I'm fine. Everything's fine. We're all fine here. Just a slight weapons malfunction. Uh, yeah. How are you? No, okay, well, legit, I'm here for you if you need me. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm getting through, it's just, you know, things could be a whole hell of a lot better right now, and that's that's all I'll say. You gotta give me money if you want to hear more details than that. Go listen to my Patreon podcast, patreon.com slash Um, uh, But before you do that, support this podcast. Go ahead, give us a like, give us a comment down below, let us know some things you thought about what happened this week in Tokusatsu. Subscribe and ring the bell in order to enable notifications and get every episode of this podcast and all the other podcasts we do here at Modular Media, like the No Price Podcast, where we discuss Marvel movies, comics, and more. Um, we have a gaming podcast. Buster, tell us about the gaming podcast. Yeah, no more games. It's the Jude Apocalypse, so we got a lot of content to cover there. Oh my god. And then there's components, where we try to entertain a guest or shoot the shit. It depends on the week. Yeah, it's very, uh, up and down. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's a bit, it's a bit like my mood swings. But, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's modular media. And if you want to help support modular media of all throughout the internet algorithms, be sure to follow us on whatever auxiliary sites you get your podcasts from. Follow us on Twitter at the modular media for updates and join the subreddit r slash modular media. But yeah. I think that's going to be all the all the plugging and tugging I need to do tonight. So let's go ahead and get into some news, which is that, uh, hey, there's more details on Ultraman Decker. Uh, first of which, uh, Mayasa Kitagawa, that, that D threw me off. Uh, we have another cast member. I think this might be the final one. Uh, uh, yeah, it seems like it, because right after that, they announced the theme song. And then I think next will be like a trailer. Because yeah. we're approaching the release date, uh, July 9th. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's actually been in Kamen Rider before as uh, Takeshi Hongo in the first and the next. Yeah, which is super interesting because I don't... Like, I don't want to say it was a bad performance, but I don't remember shit about his performance. So yeah. it's it's uh, not an entirely a memorable performance, but that those movies were a long-ass time ago, so he could have grown a whole lot as an actor since then, or maybe he just had a bad director back then. I don't yeah. know. I haven't seen him in other stuff. Yeah, but, but also, I I, he wasn't real soldier, I think, as Master Red, because I remember the first co the, the, the guy who played Takeshi Hago in the first also played Master Red, so he's technically uh, one part of the trifecta. Um, oh, of shit. Yeah, but what's with Ultraman, like, mentor... Because he seems to be the mentor character. What's with Ultraman mentors in these last couple of years and then being, like, part of the trifecta of Sentai Rider and Ultra? That's also, funny. Also, I, li I like the details about his, his backstory and his personality that were given here. That, like, he used to be a big-time fighter pilot, but now, now he's the captain of the new Gut Select team, and he's usually calm, but whenever he takes off his glasses, you know shit's about to go down. Like, oh, that, yeah. sounds, that sounds fun. Yeah, I, give like, this guy a focus episode. Yeah, like I think what Decker needs to do is actually just give all these characters focus episodes. That was Trigger's biggest weakness, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And like they, all these characters sound promising, they just need to actually like interact. So even if they don't get focus episodes, just have them like keep interacting throughout, and just we get little character bits through those interactions. You know? Yeah, I mean, like Trigger really taught me that. Like I feel when it comes to Ultraman, I know it's a big trope that there's always a team of scientists, space explorer types 
who follow around and com comment on Ultraman's exploits. But if you're not going to use them and develop them, just don't. Just don't have them in the show. If you're only going to do like a trio of characters like Trigger did, just have it be that trio of characters. Yeah, it's just, it's, I, I, it's hard to get back on Trigger if it's just, just, just tracks, but like it just, Decker really needs to impress. And I do have a good feeling about Decker, especially after the theme song announcement. Yeah, let's let's get into that too, because I don't know these artists, but you seem really excited about them. So why don't you take this story? Yeah, uh, Ultimate Decker has its opening and ending. Uh, who is covering them? We don't have the song yet, and I kind of want the song for the opening at least. We have... I'm gonna, no, no, I know who's doing the opening. The ending I've learned from Osmosis, but I've actually have experience with these guys. It's Green Mode, who has actually done a theme song for one of my favorite animes, Bungo Stray Dog, specifically the second opening, Reason for Living. And, like, maybe it's just because that song was in, like, one of, like, the most intense arcs of that show, but it's one of the best, like, just I just love that song. And I'm very excited for them to be doing a tokusatsu theme. I don't know if it's gonna be as intense as Reason for Living, because Reason for Living is very edgy, but, like... Uh, I mean, at least it's called said. Wake Up Decker, and that sounds like a big, like, call-to-action song. Yeah, so, like, I'm very interested to see how this will sound, but I'm, you know, I'm very excited for the, to see, like, someone from one of my favorite animes go into Tokusatsu, so yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm just... I, I'll probably sound good, at the very least, because they're, they're good composers. And then, uh, this one, uh, everyone else is excited for, Kanata Toku, who has actually done a theme song for... Uh, who's doing the ending song, he's actually done the ending theme for Ultraman Dino, which Decker's being based off, so that's a nice full circle. Hey, how about that? Yeah. I know people are saying, like, the swap the two, but, like, eh, I, I, I'm okay with the placements of, like, where, if, like, uh, like, because people are saying, oh, I'll have Kanata Toku do the opening. I'm like, well, he's already did the ending for Dino, so it just makes sense to do the ending for Decker. And I just think screen mode is more of an opening, eh? you know, like, it's more of, like, an intense thing. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm very excited to hear these songs. I have not heard, really, any of their work, except for the fact that, uh, uh, Kanata Toku is apparently one of the lead singers of Jam Project, and I think we all have, like, at least one or two Jam Project songs we really like. Yeah. So I know him from that, but I don't really, like, know anything he's done himself or these other guys, but it, everybody seems fairly positive about them, and I mean, if there's one nice thing I can say about Trigger, it's that it had a banger-ass opening, so I'm, I'm here for whatever Super ISC's fit to do for Decker's opening at the moment. Yeah, like, I'm like, oh, like, after Trigger's opening, I was like, how are you going to top that? And I'm like, well, why not screen mode? So it's like, I feel like that's the best way, at least for me personally, to yeah. possibly, like, follow up on Trigger's opening. It probably won't be as good, but it'll probably be, like, you know, solid. So that being said, I, I still hold a candle for one day getting a, a Toku opening of some kind out of Back On, one of my favorite Japanese bands. Yeah. Mm. Um, be interesting. I, I, I know there's a few other people out there who would agree with me on that, but we're a, we're a very timid minority. <laughs> <laughs> a very silent bunch, but you'll wake up whenever th that will happen, hopefully. Yeah, like I'm not going to hound Toei and Tsuburaya for it, but when it happens, it'll be all I tweet about for a week. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, anyways, a uh, little bit more Ultraman news, which is that uh, there's going to be an Ultraman Connection first anniversary show specifically focusing on Ultraman Max. Uh, and uh, that's really all we know at the moment. Uh, you are able to purchase tickets, and I think the date is... What is the date exactly? I'm looking Friday, at... June 17th. Yeah. Uh, no, because it's going to be a reunion special, we probably won't cover this, because neither of us have seen Max. Yeah, and I think... What, are they planning to just watch a few episodes of Max and talk about it with the cast? Maybe. I think it's also, like, there's a, like, it's a special, and they're, like, gonna have return. Yeah, that, maybe. I'm not sure. There, there might also be, like, a special short. I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure. Uh, it, it just seems like a, yeah, yeah, it's, but, yeah, it's a thing. You know, it'll be nice to, it'll be nice for yeah. people who like Max. And, like, it's interesting, because Sean Nicholas, who has been working a lot with Ultraman Connection, got his start on Max, so. I don't know. Yeah. How about that? Well, hopefully it's good. Hopefully people who watch, who have watched and like Max are excited. I really have no idea what even the general opinion about Max is, so... Yeah, I actually was asking a couple people, and it's generally received as good. Like, the people who like Max really like Max, is what I'm trying, is what I hear. Mm. Um, 
But it's like it's not like a fan favorite on the level of Mabius or Nexus. So all right. Well, uh, let's move on to something that kind of threw me for a loop because I didn't even know this was an issue. But season two of the Hanna Barbera Godzilla cartoon from the fucking sixties is finally going to be available on the internet. It's going to be uh, streamed on, I believe it's the um, the Godzilla official, YouTube channel. Yeah, the official Godzilla YouTube channel. I was trying to check if it was that or Hanna Barbera, um, because for those of you who don't know, the six the sixties Godzilla, or I'm sorry, the set the seventies. It was a seventies Godzilla cartoon. Apparently, the entire second season of that has just been lost media since it originally aired. Wait, what? Yeah. According to this article by the Tokusatsu Network, starting next week, season two of Hanna-Barbera's Godzilla animated series will be airing on Toho's official international Godzilla channel on YouTube. First premiering in September 1979, the 13-episode season has never been released on home video and was rarely seen after 1981. June 6 will mark the first time the Calico Crew's second round of Saturday Morning Adventures will have been seen in decades. Originally produced in the late 1970s after Joseph Barbera contacted producer Henry Saperstein, I'm going to say how you pronounce that, uh, who was able to help license the character to Hannah Barbera, though the show's contents were restrained by network restrictions. Godzilla is a nostalgically looked upon cult classic of the era because this is how a lot of boomers first got exposed to Godzilla. A lot of people, a lot of people don't realize that these days because it's just lol Godzuki is a thing that exists. But a lot of, a lot of like old old Toku fans first got exposed to Godzilla because of this goofy ass cartoon, and uh, it's it's pretty cool that it's finally. All of it is finally going to be out there for everyone who wants to see can see it. Yeah, it's good to have lost media not be lost media. Yeah, which is why I put this in here, because normally we don't cover like animated projects and stuff like that. But like I thought this was kind of a big. Yeah. Speaking of less than big deal, I don't know how to transition to this. <laughs> uh, Hey, guys, finally, we have new lightning collection news. It's a leak of metallic MMPR white. I don't care. Uh, but next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this this figure is just so odd to me, because first of all, we have no idea how it's going to be released. My guess is fan channel exclusive, but it was, the photo is from a Malaysian retailer called My Toy, um, and it's just a shot of the box, which, quite frankly, this figure looks terrible. It doesn't look anything like the suit. It just looks like a semi-clear plastic with uh, sparkles in it, which is not how I would describe that suit looking. And the Tommy head, which is a brand new sculpt, the unmasked Tommy head, he looks like a freaking Twilight vampire. He does! Um, the I mean, only good thing I could possibly say about this release is, hey, this is the first time we've gotten the full Zeo crystal as an accessory. I'm not paying 20 20 $25 just for that, though. Alright, next. Uh, Alright, more toy news, and this time pretty good toy news, in my opinion. Uh, Super 7 has announced the second wave of their Toho Ultimates line, which is going to be 1995 Burning Godzilla and no. Heisei Mecha Godzilla. They both look sick. Yeah, I... I am pretty excited about this line, to be honest. I know we're not getting any of the figures until next year, but I I really like how these look. They basically look like monster arts with uh, slightly more solid construction and on a um, slightly better price scale. Because monster arts typically run $100, $150. These are $85 a pop, which sounds like a lot, but when you consider how much plastic is involved... I think it's a fair price. And the fact that these are going to be made to order. Yeah. Um, I, I really like all the accessories uh, Mecha Godzilla comes with. He comes with exactly everything he needs to, in my opinion. You kind of question the choice to uh, make um, open mouth and closed mouth two different heads. Why not just put a hinge in there? But I do really like that they have a separate head just for him looking straight up when he's flying. Because it can be kind of hard to do that with a joint and have it not look unnatural. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then Burning Godzilla, 
I don't particularly care for that look, but I know there's people who love that period of the movies. So to me, I like I like that Bernie Godzilla design. This is my first time seeing it. I love it. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 again, I still want to. I kind of want to binge all the Godzilla movies eventually, just so I can know what the hell we're talking about. Yeah, Godzilla is one of those things where it's like. I've always felt like, ah, oh, maybe I should watch at least all the movies I really want to see, but I never get around to it because I fucking binged Cinemassacre's Monster Madness Godzilla Fawn like four or five times when I was a teenager. And so, like, my brain is like, no, you know all the basics of Godzilla. You don't need to actually watch the movies. And I'm like, no, no, no. Don't be that guy. Don't be yeah. the history of Power Rangers guy. You know yeah, what I, mean. <laughs> I, I need to watch a lot of Godzilla at some point. I've seen yeah. like eight or nine movies, but there's like 30 or 40 Godzilla movies at this point. Yeah, we, we, we need to educate ourselves. Anyway, yeah. that's stuff we're actually educated on. <laughs> yeah, uh, more Gokaiger toys are coming, everybody. Just as expected when we got that uh, Kirame Silver Key in Tengo Kaiger. Uh, there's going to be an add-on to the Memorial Edition Gokai Cellular, that being the Gokai Struker unit. Uh, now, this is apparently a thing that's in the uh, Gokaiger vs. Two Kaiser special. We have not watched that because it's not subbed as of this recording. So if you haven't watched it either and you don't want spoilers, maybe, maybe skip ahead like five minutes. Um, but basically what this is, is it's going to be... Uh, Another bunch of number pads that you just stick in the bottom of the Gokai Cellular like a key, which I personally think is hilarious in a very Toku toy way. Yeah, I, I like. I know people are poking fun at it, but I just kind of love like the ridiculous. The, it still looks neat. It still looks neat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I like all the keys that are going to come with it. I mean, obviously, you're getting a key for every six that's come since uh, Gokaiger, and that is uh as listed in this article juo the world ho -Oh soldier lupon x and pattern x russo gold and kirame silver and i think they all look really good like there were some keys in the uh in the tent in the memorial sets for the regular um mobirates that looked kind of like eh, you slacked on these these all look like they paid incredible attention to detail. I mean, just looking at Juo the World and all the detail on the screen printing for the animals on his chest, I would not expect that with Ranger Keys, but it looks like they just directly translated what's on the suit to this little figure. Yeah! Uh, also surprised that Ho Ho Soldiers considered Q Ranger 6? That's interesting. I mean, he does fit the role, but like, I'm just surprised. Yeah. I mean, he kind of has that that six ranger debut slot, but he's technically not the six ranger. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, like he he fits the slot. He fits the slot, especially in his role in like versus movies and stuff. So he does fit the slot. So yeah, it's like getting mad that Avare Killer is considered the sixth ranger of Avare Ranger. Yeah, I know there was like a debate, brief debate. Thank God that was Ryu. Is it Ryu Commander or Ryu, or Whole Soldier? I feel like Whole Soldier fits well, especially because like I feel like Whole Soldiers were the last six to show up in the twenties instead of like the tens. Mm -hmm. Uh. Yeah. But no, uh, I really like this. I think it's really cool. However, it's only going to work with the Memorial Edition Gokai Cellular, and I don't have that uh, currently, so I have no interest or plans to get this as of now. I may, I may somehow come into having a Memorial Gokai Cellular and change my mind at some point, but right now it's just like, hey, that's neat. Oh, wow, it's going to be $83. Eighty-three dollars for a chunk. Oh, like oh, the cellular or the accessories? The accessories. Okay, that's a bit much. Uh huh. Just, just a little much. Just a little yeah. much. Like seventy would be much easier to stomach, I think. But uh, yeah. moving on to things that are easier to stomach, uh, the Sarah Brand's ba bracelets are getting released as P Bandai exclusive items, uh, and they look. As good as I could expect them to. I mean, they're probably just molded pieces of plastic with a button or a motion sensor on them, so they play yeah. the sound. Yeah. They're, they're cool changers, but, like, yeah. They're very basic. Yeah, they're, they're basically cool, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Basically cool. That's that's exactly how I would describe the Sarah Brands and our podcast. Yeah. Uh, good old brain gang. Um, but let's let's talk about something that's a little too basic for my taste, which is 
Once again, uh, Power Rangers is getting a building block line, and it's not Lego, so it looks like shit. Uh, yeah. There is going to be a set of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Battle Bike Construction Sets from Forever Clever, a company I have never heard of and probably never will hear of again unless they do more of these sets. Uh, and yes, these are officially licensed by Hasbro. Uh, however, these look freaking lame. They These look like knockoff minifigures that I could get at any convention with bikes that aren't based on anything that's actually an MMPR. I got nothing. Just, yeah. It's licensed stuff. It's not as interesting as uh, the next news we're talking about. Yeah, uh, the next two figures in the uh, Dino Fury Kids line, which I, I say that just to define it's not Lightning Collection. The kids' figures are still extremely valid. Um, hey, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Void King and Mastering uh, sometime in the yeah. fall bios. Um, and these figures look fairly just because i'm not familiar with the master mode for real soldier i've somehow never seen a picture of this and it looks a little goofy to me i'm not super into the purple cape on the gold but i i can see it maybe working in the show yeah um, it's 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 a pretty cool mode like my thing with master mode is that it's like they basically introduce a new toy the resale like it's a basically an extra boosted up repaint of the sword uh that you can see in the toy and that's what transforms them to Master Mode. And it's introduced after Real Soul Max, which I find weird because Real Soul Max is like feels more final for me to me. So, mm. and like all the characters can use Master Mode. So, I I'm not sure what the hell Master Mode is going to do or what story re re relevance will have in re Dino Fury proper. But hey, that's neat. I have well, more just a a Ion Focus episode. Yeah, Dino, Dino Fury admittedly needs. It it's not the greatest with uh, giving like its power up significance. I think, like, mm -hmm. the Riesel Max Dino Fury Knight was, like, the best one they did. Yeah, but uh, then Void Knight is the really interesting figure, because for some reason they chose to make most of him semi-transparent. That might be a budget reason. I'm guessing that's probably why. Uh, might probably a budget reason, but uh, it's fine. You know, mm -hmm. it's interesting. It fits the suit. I, I, I wanted a better version of the suit, I'll admit, but, like... Uh, I, for, I like the suit a lot. I like the character Real Soldier and the Dino Fury, so I'll probably pick it up eventually. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like a bad figure. It's just a weird choice when the suit is so clearly a solid white color. Yeah, fair. Although it, it just give us like Void King artwork, which I do love the artwork on the packaging for this season, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very happy about that. Also, by the way, to those of you who aren't toy collectors um, by trade, I should, I should just put it out there for people. Uh, you don't have to be right away, but, like, over the years, be careful with this figure and any other figures you get that use a lot of clear plastic, because clear plastic tends to become brittle way faster than any other form of plastic for some reason. Yeah. Pro it's probably a budget thing, or, like, materials. It's, like it's, it's something about the integrity and the chemical makeup and all that fancy nerd shit, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably get a skip on the gold one just because I already have a gold figure and it looks like they didn't really improve much. Uh, it seems mm -hmm. like it still has the morpher on the side. It looks uh, like they just gave him a cape and a new accessory. Yeah. It, it, it's very much like I think that uh, armor thing they did for like uh, the armor for a uh, red that they had with like a bike combo. Uh, which I don't think we covered that, but it was a thing. Yeah. All or, right. Like, uh, like individual releases for green and black. Uh, that was in the combo pack with the little arm, like, mm -hmm. yeah, boost. Anyway, um... Let's get on to the new releases! Yeah, um, start... It's just superhero time this week, uh, but it's a good week, I'll... Spoilers. Uh, Common Rider Revice, episode 38, A Father and Son Weave, THE ULTIMATE REVICE! I gotta bug up my butt with this episode. Didn't like it? It's not that I didn't like it, it's just that, like, I'll... There's a lot of, like, weird little things about it. Like, just... They, because the story needs them to, they just say, like, oh, Hiromi never lost his memories. Um, and then the entire scene of them extracting uh, the gift cells from uh, Junpei or uh, Genta is just, like, case of instance of malpractice after instance of malpractice, and it's really awkward if you know anything about practicing medicine and how to do yeah, surgery there's properly. There's like a Twitter thread that would kept roasting everything about that scene, and I'm yeah. like... I mean, granted, that's part of the story, but like, it is kind of like it. Or, or, a bit irresponsible, but like, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, I like Ultimate Revice as a suit, 
But I think it's kind of lame that, like, from a toy standpoint, that you have to have two belts to get the full effect of it. And I didn't really care for the jingle. The jingle didn't do anything for me. Yeah, the I, I think, like, the moment was better. The moment in fight, where it's, like, was much, like, a better moment than, like, the actual jingle. I really didn't care about the, the jingle. The jingle's kind of lame. I don't know. Not, like, mm-hmm. lame. It just felt there. Like, compared to, like, the other revised jingles. But other than that, this was a really solid episode, in my opinion. Uh, like, the, like, I will say, the Hiromi stuff was weird. Uh, and, like, yeah, what the surgery stuff could have been handled better. But, like, uh, story beats and character moments, they're very good this episode. What what specifically did you like? Uh, uh, uh I'm trying to think, because it's, like... Okay, well, ha- I do like the little characterization they give Hana. Like, that kind of, like, based... That line was off- great. Uh, but the line right after it was, yeah, it was like, oh, what the hell going on? It's probably the most misogynistic thing I've seen in Toku since Mega Force. Yeah, it's it's not great. And I'm like, bro, this people call it Nui misogynistic. Bro, he just mel he's just a melodrama guy. This uh, I don't know what's going on over there. I, and I get that's like probably Hikaru's character, but like out of all the character traits to give him misogyny, really? Yeah, we Meat Shield Man needs to give his belt back to uh Hiromi. Or just give it to Tamaki at this point. Where was Tamaki this episode? That's right, Tamaki wasn't in this episode at all. That's weird. Bro, um, did, did they just hear all the memes? Compl- did, did Twitter bully him off the sh- Oh, God, that's... Please, no. <laughs> Please, no. We want... No, we, we... We're like... If Tamaki only has two fans, we're both of them. <laughs> um, I uh, also like... Also, what the dad did, the little message, uh, yeah, like he reported, that, that was wholesome. That, that was really nice. That was wholesome. Uh, Junpei slash Gento was great this episode. I had no problems with him. I found George and his dad to be a bit questionable just because of, like, A, all that malpractice stuff, and B, George has a line where, like, he gets mad at his dad for trying to do risky shit again, and he's like, are you trying to repeat the past? You know, I had to go through shit because of that, and I'm like, what shit did you have to go through? Didn't they say in the mystery that, like, you got you rose to the top of Phoenix super fast because of the privilege of who your dad was? Yeah, it's... Like, the only flashback we've seen of you, you seemed like just a happy little science baby. Honestly, like, people have been bringing this up. Uh, George's character, like, personality-wise is great, but his arc trajectory has been weird, where it's like he started off villainous, but then he quickly became, like, a helpful guy. And I'm like... like it feels maybe like he was supposed to be a writer, but then they kept coming up with ideas for other writers and just never got back to him. Yeah, it re- like, honestly, I keep saying it really feels like he was supposed to be over demons. It kind of would have made that suit much tolerable because, oh, it's a writer fan using a writer kit bash. No. <laughs> that means- I'm a sergeant. Yeah, I'm not sure how much of an upgrade that is, or... Uh, but yeah, Ultimate Revice, like, the moment, like, Vice, like, you know, Vice and Iki, you know, it really feels like a nice, like, culmination. And I do like, like, I do love the duo, like, how they just, like, the the, the debut of the form, like, just, like, mm-hmm. aesthetics and fight and, like, the kind of the dialogue. I know people are complaining about multiple Vices. I get that, but, like, I kind of found it a little funny. <laughs> I mean, like, nobody had a problem with that when they did it with O's or Wizard or uh, yeah, like, however yeah. many other writers have copying powers. Yeah. I, I, was, I think it was more because, oh, Vice is annoying, but, like, I, I, I we've made our piece of it. I, I thought it was fine to do that. I was just a little, like, it was one of those times where, like, usually I'm like, oh, you're going to use CGI, whatever, you got to get this shit out quick. That was one of those times where I was like, eh, I kind of would have liked it better if you just shot... M- if you had just put the camera on like a programmed crane and done multiple shot multiple plates of the same two suits fighting in different spots instead of making it a bunch of CGI duplicates. Oh, I think it was just because people find Vice annoying. Like that wasn't like it wasn't like the effect people. Oh, oh no, I I know what you're saying. I'm just saying like that's what I didn't like about the scene. I don't uh-huh. have a problem with multiple vices inherently though. Okay, yeah. So it kind of like makes sense for him but like yeah he would love himself you know just mm-hmm. <laughs> i didn't mean that i just realized that could have be taken the wrong way anyway uh yeah uh solid ep- not the greatest revised episode but you know it's pretty good but very much like a step up and like i feel better about this because they don't mention the vaccine thing again maybe they'll just i'm not sure if they'll quickly sweep that under the rug i don't think they will but like I kind of uh, hope they I do. I don't think they're gonna, because there's a lot of talk in this episode of, oh man, we gotta talk some sense into Daiji. Oh yeah, and the preview does not, uh, like, seems to be leading to something. Uh, I won't I, say what I, happened. I pray, I pray for my boy. I pray for yeah, him. Yeah, uh, 
It kind of feels weird that we're doing the Daiji kind of like, well, like Daiji angst in the last few episodes. It kind of reminds me of Hero from X Aid. Yeah. You know I don't know. And that's if all I got. We, if only we're keeping it secret. Maybe it's like a P Bandai thing and they're just keeping it secret. Like, uh, the billion cross forms. Uh, but yeah. I don't know why um, I thought cross. Common Rider Eternal Life, or Common Rider Dickhead Demons, or or yeah. what was it, Dickhead Evil? Yeah, no, <laughs> it, 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 Eternal Evil would be better because alliteration. Oh no, uh, yeah, that's 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 totally what they should they should bring back Evil and give him a new form that like affects both suits. You can switch back and forth. Yeah, that, that, I keep I keep wishing they just just give us our boy Kagero back. That's all we're asking, Revice. Yeah. I I need my 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 delicious emo twink. Yeah, that needs to be a player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking that of twinks, so uh, speaking of twinks, Avatar: Sentai Dawn Brothers, episode fourteen, Jiro the Substitute. What did you think? I thought this episode was a lot of fun. Um, I'm surprised I didn't think of the workaround for the thing they they did in this episode last week. It makes total sense. Uh, however, I think it would have been cooler if they had made us wait one more episode before they figured it out. You're right. Uh, so last episode, Taro died. <laughs> and last time on Avatar of Sentai Dom Brothers, Taro yeah. fucking died. Yeah, and basically everyone's kind of sad, and like Jiro's kind of like, ah, now my chance, because he's also part of the Mobile Taro clan, it seems. I uh, wonder if there's going to be any other Taros, like, uh, your Taro, I'm Taro, he's, I, your Taro, are there any other Taros I should know about, basically? Um, oh, that, I hadn't even really thought about that. Do you think, how do you think they're related? Are they, like, cousins or brothers or something like that? Cousins if they want to go for the Superman, uh, like, mm. thing, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, or are they just part of the same clan or something? Maybe they're best friends, who knows? Uh, oh, they'll definitely be best friends. Like I said last week, these... Once once we get uh, Taro back full time, they're gonna be chaos grunts. Yeah, uh, like either fighting each other or like loving each other. Either one. Uh, yeah, uh, but he makes a pretty fun first impression. Uh, this episode, he's kind of like basically like he's like I'm gonna quit and do my dream, and then he gets freaking bodied, and he's like he's trying to be like I'm trying to motivate. They, I love that they spend ten minutes on everyone in his village being like, okay, dude. You're a fucking weirdo. Just leave already. Yeah, just like it's very similar to Momotaro. It's like the the the, the Taro the the Mo, Ta, Mo, Don Momotaro clans are very like except they're an eccentric bunch. Um, mm. yeah, and also so actually I like what they did with like bringing Taro back so we could still have a mecha fight. Yeah, uh, because basically like okay points we're gonna revive him. Oh wait, he's still technically dead by the end because he's just only there for the fights or something. I just have a theory about that. They use, their po- they use their points to bring Don Momotaro back. They need they need to use their points to bring Momo Itaro back. That would be really clever, honestly. I could totally see Inoue pulling that. Yeah. And also we see, like, Sonoi. He's kind of, like, sad um, about, like, the whole thing. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, wait, this episode is a lot more than I realized, because... Uh, of... It's interesting that Sonoi's got this conflict going on with him, and the others are kind of like, hey, just get your head in the game, bro. It's no big deal, bro. You just killed a dude, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, like, there's also an instance where, because of Jiro attacking them, um, the fucking Brown Brain Gang member finally actually laughs at something. Yeah. Just, like, legitimate, like, an, a genuine laugh. Just, you yeah, know. And I laughed at it, too, because just the the, the fucking rock bo- bonking off of his helmet was was such good comedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah very, very good moment. Uh, oh, and then there's, like, the Subasa stuff, like, where he's, like, finally meets Miho, who looks like his girlfriend. And then that whole, like, injury happens. And, like, then at the end of the episode, Kijiro's, like, he's angry, and it seems like a bestial is possessing him. I don't think it's a... I think I think it's a regular demon. Demon, like, oh, yeah, like... Oh, yes, I don't know. How many factions do we have in this show? We have the, the regular monsters of the week, we have the bestials. No, are they... Dis- I feel like they're the same. They're, like, there's tiers no, of no, bestials. No. I, I think the regular monsters of the weeks are demons, because that's what everybody's been referring to them on, and the uh, beast deals are something else. We have three factions of villains in the show, Jesus. Yeah, and there's technically three factions of heroes, because you have the Dom brothers, you have uh, whatever the guy in the jail cell is doing, and yeah. you have 
And I think Kaito's kind of his own faction. I, yeah. I, I don't trust Kaito too much yet. Yeah, I've, okay, uh, here's my here's my whole theory. Okay, Kaito and the demons, they're related uh, somehow, because they, 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 he gets Sentai Gears from them. Uh, and then there's the whole thing with the Dawn, and then the Dawn Brothers, everything else is like its own thing, the, from the Beastials and Don Momotaro. That's mm. my whole crack. I really... Again, we really need to start getting... I feel like we need to start trickling out some answers, like, in the next few episodes. Like, Once we hit the 20s. Once we hit yeah, the 20s. Tw- 20s is... Yeah, that's where I'm like... 20s with the mid-season shock, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, By episode 25, we need to know what the fuck is up with Kaito. Yeah. Especially because the rumor that said that Kaito would be leaving by the end of June... I don't think that's what the, I don't I don't think they're gonna he's gonna leave by the end of June, but like I think like he might leave like halfway through. Um mm-hmm. Do you think we're gonna see the other Zenkaijers in this show at all? Do you think they're gonna show up and be like Kaito, where the fuck you been? At the end of Kaito's arc. Um mm-hmm. or like we'll see alternate versions of the Zenkaijers. Maybe we'll get the human actors in there and they'll be hey. like Cause because this could this could theoretically be a multiverse uh Zenkaiser, cause mm-hmm. It's a Zenkaiser um, variant. Yeah. Um, it's literally a Zenkaiser variant. Yeah, because it's Zenkaiser Black. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there, there's a lot of interest. Oh, God, man. There's, 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 so much shit, there's so much shit going on in this series. It's so dense. There's so much happening in every frame. Yeah. Like, and it's like it's a lot. It's it's a, it, The show's a lot. And I love, although, like, here's something I'm kind of missing. What happens all the Avatar changes? That is a good-ass question. I did yeah. think about that the other day, but it hadn't been in my brain since then. It is weird that they stopped doing that. Yeah, maybe it's like one of those like early gimmick things where it's like, oh, they want they start doing it, but then they just like transition into just power ups and mech up. Now, yeah. now that they have the Robo Taros, it's like there's not really a need for them anymore. Yeah, though it would be nice to just for the American market. It would be funny if Jiro turned into a Tommy form. I might have already done it. <laughs> yeah, I can see that happening. I can see that happening based on the toys alone. Yeah. Uh, but then again, JDF apparently hates Power Rangers, but then it's still going to Power Rangers. I don't care anymore. Ugh. JDF's going to say whatever the fuck he needs to do to keep in the news headlines, and that's why I don't fucking report on it. I mean, like, it's celebrity gossip anyway, so who cares? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Don uh, Brothers proven to be the peak fiction that we all need in our lives. Just uh, a nice, like, what the hell is going on? And I'm like, it feels like Build. Because I remember watching Build Live, and I was like, every episode was like, what's going on? And it's like, it feels like that, you know? I don't feel that way from having wa- binged Build, but I-, I guess I could understand it. Yeah, believe me, bu- Build Live time- was an experience. The last time I watched a toku that, like, consistently felt like what the hell's going on was Guy. Yeah, that, that's what I, I binged guy, so it's like, yeah. Uh-huh. I think that's just the thing. It's like, Toku is kind of engineered to make you feel what the hell is going on on a weekly basis. Yeah. Or at least I'm, Toei Toku is. I don't know if there's ultra shows like that. Uh, the kind of, Nexus kind of has that vibe, but, you know. Um, All right. Well, uh, I think that's, is that everything we have to say about the new Yeah. Episode? You go right. first, because uh, my right. voice is tired. All right. And, and I also did, like, a, a fair bit more than you did this week. Uh, first of all, I watched another handful of Common Rider Black episodes. I watched 33, 34, and 35. And the world-famous f- motherfucker Shadow Moon has finally appeared. Goddamn, was that a good two-parter. Um, Ooh. It, it, like, it feels like proper shit is happening, and it is bad. Like, it, it's fucking, it's, it's Scott the Waz going, hey, all this is bad, real bad. Um, because fucking the Christ, not Christ's Empire, that's RX. Uh, Golgum is just like, remember when we tried to kidnap, uh, Nobuhiko's sister to get her life energy to bring Shadow Moon back that one time? Let's just do that again. And this time it fucking works. Oh. And, Bellag- and Bellagania is, like, scrambling, because he's like, uh, once Shadow Moon takes over, there's not gonna be a need for me, so I have to defeat Black now to prove I'm worthy of being a Century King. And he just complete like... He does get the jump on Black. He beats the shit out of him. But then he does that Toku villain thing of like, I'll finish you off in a minute. I'm going to go gloat to the other bad guys. And then he shows up and Shadow Moon is alive. And Shadow Moon just beats the crap out of him and fucking kills him. Like he's he full on goes, I am the bad guy now. Get the fuck out. And then there's a beautiful, beautiful scene at the end of the two-parter where... um. 
Shadow Moon confronts Kotaro for the first time. And it's it's really interesting how naive Kotaro seems because Shadow Moon just shows up and he's like, I am going to defeat you so I can be the Century King of Golgum and Golgum will no longer be opposed. And Kotaro's response is just like, oh, Nobuhiko, you finally awakened. Get out of it. Let's go home. Come on, snap out of it, man. And he and he full on goes Darth Vader and is just like, that name no longer has any meaning for me. You will die. And that's the end of the two-parter. And it's like, holy shit. Dang. Yeah. Like people said people have said to me that black really picks up when you get to Shadow Moon. And like, because of the strength of like the first 10 episodes of Black, I was kind of in doubt of that. Uh n- no, like there was a bit of a lull. I won't lie, some of those stories of the week were starting to feel a bit tedious. But 34 and 35, man, fucking bangers. And I can't wait to see where the show goes from here. Um yeah. and I also bought some fucking toys. I got another package from Taka because uh he he got Don Onitajin in the same night I got my paycheck for this month. So I was just like, all right, fuck it. Even though I said on the podcast I was going to wait to get it. Fuck it, I'm getting it now. I uh, bought it too. It's not here yet, but I did buy it. Yeah, and let me tell you, it's fucking big, bro. Look, it is as, it's, depending on how you look at it, it's either as big or just slightly shorter than the Super Train Megazord. Um, slash, uh... Oh god, I don't know what the Sentai name for that is. Let me I'll go look at let me look at Google Fives wiki and find out. Yeah. Uh but no, it's it's a big boy. And um I think my general opinion on it is it is good, but if you're expecting like it a freaking third party Transformers level toy, that's not what you're here for. It's uh, the grand liner, go liner. Okay. Uh it's it's as big as that mecha. But the thing about this toy is this feels like a good solid few steps forward for Super Sentai in terms of toy design. This should not be the benchmark. This should not be what we stick to for the next few years. I want to see continued improvement from this point on because this thing does a lot of cool stuff that you've never seen on a DX Sentai Mecha before, but it's it's all like that you gave me an inch, but what we really needed was a mile here because... There's a lot of articulation that's never been on before. A lot of big, healthy ball joints. But some some parts just don't have what I think they needed to have. Like, specifically the hips feel a little more limited than I expected them to. So you can't quite get them in those wild, crazy, long stance battle poses. The arms are really good. There's a lot of robust joints there. I was surprised that they avoided um, having what I call uh, barbell lifter arms. Um, which is which is when you can't swivel the the wrist and the elbow joint to be correctly oriented for just raising the weapon. Um, I I really like that they did what I call what I refer to as I don't know if it started here, but I I know it from here first. The masterpiece transformer method of holding a weapon, which instead of having the hands be just a hole that you stick the weapon into, the hand hinges open, and then the swords have two different uh tabs that they peg into and then you close the hand around that so it's a super solid connection there um and i think the transformation overall is very fun very chunky feeling reminds me a lot of like unicron trilogy transformers um but i would have liked to see just a bit more articulation in the individual uh robotaro modes um, specifically Oni Sister, she is just a brick, which feels a bit disappointing. Like, I don't need her to have, like, SH Figuarts level articulation, but just, like, a similar level to what I'm used to with, um, old school Sentai Robo. Uh, whereas she, the most she can do is actually, her head has more articulation in Don Oni Tajin mode than it does in her individual Robotaro mode. Um, which is a fun little thing that nobody had told me about going into the set is all the, um, except for, uh, Inu brother, all of the individual Robotaro's heads are on ball joints. So you can puppeteer them and have them be like, they're talking on their own, like they do in the show. And that's pretty fun. I do like that. Um, also weirdly enough, no paper instructions in the box. Uh, I assume it's like a QR code or go on Bandai's website type thing. I just looked up a review. And I mean, the transformation was fairly self-explanatory. The only thing I had trouble with is um, the ab piece. There's a, there's a separate ab piece 
that you're supposed to plug on to the app section to get it to do something. And it wasn't super clear how you do that until I watched a review. Um, uh, but overall, I think Don Onitajin is really good. It's an amazing step forward for DX Sentai Robos. Um, but we can't stop here. We need to keep going. If we're going to keep, if Sentai is going to keep going, Sentai Robos need to keep getting better from this point out. Um, I hope so. Yeah. I also picked, I also picked up the uh, DXZ Riser from Ultraman, uh, or I'm sorry, DXZ Riser from Ultraman Z. Um, and uh, it's about as fun a toy as it looks in the show. Like, there's no real surprises with it. Um, it's it's just a solid little change. Well, not little. It's it's a fairly big changer. Um, my only real like complaint with it is I wish the handhold were a bit larger. It it's one of those times where you're like, oh, this is really made for a little Japanese kid. I I have a hard time getting my whole hand in here. Um, yeah. Uh, but the but the medals are really really fun, really nice to play with. Um, big ups to Taka for putting the card in a card sleeve when sending it because this this came with its box, but it had been opened once before. Um, he didn't have to do that. I do appreciate that he went to that extra step to protect the product. Um, and uh, it's it's a fairly solid little toy. And then uh, again, big ups to Taka. He also threw in uh, the green Ryu Soul uh, from Ryu Soldier. And uh, I hadn't messed with any Ryu Souls before, or any Japanese ones. I have the one that comes with the Dino Fury Morpher, but that's just a hunk of plastic with a sticker. Uh, this was really fun. Um, and I say was because uh, the spring on mine broke after constantly doing it for three days in a row. Dang. Um, so, like, I really like it as a fidget toy, but now I need another one. Ah. Uh. Um, but, uh... Yeah, that's that's all the Toku toys I bought uh, this time around, and probably for a little while because I I kind of need to rethink my spending habits. Uh, same <laughs> prices on everything are rising here here in America at least, and uh, I think we're all going to be tightening our belts over the summer. Yeah, um, I, again, like once I get done any touch, I'm probably gonna like take a break from Toku toys, uh, or just like because like, there's a couple games I want, but like just. To take a chill from, like, Toku Toys. But, like, I feel like Don Only Taj is a good way to cap it off, especially because I already got, like, the five Don Brother Chain Hero figures. Yeah, like um, I said, he, he needs more articulation, but the articulation he has does feel really good. Like, I didn't mention, but those uh those ankle joints feel really robust. Nice. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm just really excited to just have, like, a nice, clean mecha on my shelf, along with the Dino Fury mecha. Um... All right, uh, let's get into the thing I did this week. I binged Kamen Rider Agito. It was Yay. okay. <laughs> oh no. Uh, it was. It's good. I don't think the season's for me. Uh, it's it, it will appeal to a very specific audience. Uh, I am not that audience. And honestly, I think it's better to talk about Agito than to actually watch Agito. At least I found it to be more fun to actually research and look up the lore. Because I don't think the show does a great job explaining the lore. Apparently, a lot of the lore is in supplementary material that was explained later. Uh, oh, oh, that's not great. Also, I've never heard that. What the hell, Boomer Rider fans? Uh, here's the Agito's character work and drama is great. Except, I don't think Gil Gil's is a bit hit and miss, but like he does have his moments. He does have a really good one-off episode midway through the show that is just like peak writer. Um, but like as a sh overall as a show. I'm a bit conflicted. I get why a lot of people love it. I don't. It's not for me, you know. Um, I'm yeah. gonna like it's very. It doesn't appeal to my sensibilities. It's it's very story focused, where I'm more of a character guy, and the character stuff in Agito is really good. It just I don't. I wish there was a bit more of it, and there was more of a focus on it rather than like the mystery and the lore and the stuff. Um, I, I will say when you actually fully under when you actually understand the lore, you sit down and read it. It's very good. I love the lore of Agito. I just wish it was better explained in the show. Uh, I will say, Agito aesthetically? Amazing. I love the I love the aesthetics and power-up cycle of Agito. Uh, um, it's really just... I just wish, like... I just I wish I liked it more, but it's just, it just doesn't appeal to my specific sensibilities. Sounds like really. it's in that class of show I like to refer to as frustratingly almost great. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's a good show, but just not like one. I don't. I, I probably maybe I'll find. If maybe if I on a rewatch it'll be better, but it's not one I 
hankering to go back to anytime soon. I'm yeah. glad I watched it, but that's about it. Interesting. I'll have more, like... I'm I, this, The review's been super hard to write just because I'm like... I don't want to be too mean. I don't want to be mean about it, but, like... I just couldn't vibe with a lot of the choices there. and I, But I still understand that is a... So, like, that it doesn't... It just didn't appeal to my... What I'm looking for in Kamen Rider, you know? Yeah, and, and I do like it that it did set up a lot of, like... It set up a lot of what, like, future Rider series would build on. With, like, multiple Riders and, like, the... Like, mysteries and stuff. Like, I, I'm pretty sure without Agito, we wouldn't have built. I mean, duh, but, like, like the sto- Agito storytelling paved the way for, like, the, the Amnesiac plot is what led to Build's Amnesiac plot being good, is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, yeah, you gotta walk before you can run. Yeah, and granted, different writers, and... Yeah, and it, it, it did, like, as for... Like, it just, like, I just felt surprised that, like, this is Inoue's first writer show. I'm usually very on board with Inoue, but, like, this was kind of, like... I don't know. Granted, well, he, I don't... He was. You got. You got to have historical perspective too. He was. He was figuring out how he approaches Ryder at a time when Toy, in general, was trying to figure out how to approach Ryder again. Yeah. Um. And not to mention that. And also, um, like he probably probably like he his father worked on Ryder, so he probably wanted to be like he was somewhat respectful before going fully new way with like stuff like Fies and Kiva, which I have I, I haven't finished Fies, but I do love what I saw of Fies. I know you're not a big Fies guy, but I'm I really like Fies. Um, my pro, it's interesting. I feel like I I'm gonna have to give Fies a, a second chance at some point because the thing I didn't like about Fies, people have routinely told me like, but that's the point. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't like that. But that's the point. All right, fine. Yeah, like, I, I, Fies, when did you watch Fies? Uh, I want to say it was like a year or two before we met. Maybe you'll like it better now, uh, I will say. Because there's, there's a few characters that, like, I think you would be down with. Kiba, specifically, I think you would be down with. Uh, uh, but yeah, like, I, I suggest giving Fies another chance. Um. Mm-hmm. I do I remember was, really liking the one uh, monster who was really into his dog. Oh, yeah, uh, Kaito. Kaito? No, there was there was a there was a there was a monster whose human form was a black guy. Oh, oh that's he was, real, he was really effeminate, and he loved his his little poochie dog that he called Chaco. And I oh yeah, that's like, that's just like a one off casual character, but he's he's cool. He's cool. Yeah. That's not really like a main character, but like you know, yeah. he's neat. Though it is hilarious that you say that, and, and I'm like, that's the thing I liked about Fies the most, that guy. Yeah. We need that guy in a reunion movie. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I'm surprised they haven't done, like, a Fies V cinema at this point, uh, just because of how frequent the actors still do writer projects. Fair uh, enough. That would be fun. Yeah. I, I feel like any minute now, they're just always going to be like, all right, Fies movie, maybe after Don Brothers is over, who knows. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for this week. How about that? Uh, Buster, where can everybody find you on the internet should they want to? Okay, hi, I'm Buster Corp. I do video essays on the internet. Uh, I recently put out a Zenkaiger video and also put out a Kamen Rider Kuga video and Kamen Rider Agito video this week. Uh, so get ready for all the it's Toku summer, summer of the summer of George, baby. Get ready for that. <laughs> uh... Uh, how are you? Uh, where can people find you, Vac, huh? Uh, YouTube.com slash the Vacuuminator for videos and stuff. Uh, Twitter.com slash the Vacuuminator for tweets and stuff. And Instagram.com slash the underscore Vacuuminator for pictures and stuff. But, folks, that is, uh, that is gonna do it, um, for us for this week in Tokusatsu. So, you know what? We'll see you back here next week when we find out whatever happens that week in Tokusatsu.